Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is my brother Pedro. What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro Rose, Creative Tech here at Adafruit. Every week we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for you folks. Let's kick off the show with today's coupon code. It's Badge Life. So if you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop, use coupon code Badge Life. It'll get you 10% off your order. This works on everything in the shop except for certificates and Adabox. the subscriptions of Adabox. So you can use a badge life for all the awesome things. If we head on over to the website, we can see we have uh, some freebie deals, adafruit.com slash free. Let's run through them pretty quickly. For orders that are $99 or more, you get the free Perma Proto half size breadboard. That's this guy over here, lovely breadboard. 149 or more, you get an, uh, an iron on skill badge. It's randomly uh, chosen, but uh, you won't get a duplicate because we keep that on order. For orders that are 200 or more, you get you free oh. UPS ground oh, shipping Wait. plus the Perma Brodo plus the skill badge. For orders that are 299 or more, you get all that plus a Circuit Playground Express. Pretty awesome. For all the details, go to adafruit.com slash free. You can check out all the awesome things there. Excellent. And here's a lovely photo. We have some same day delivery options as well. So if you go to adafruit.com slash shipping, you can see all the different uh, shipping stuff that we have. And same day deliveries in New York City is an option. So check that out when you check out. For newsletters, uh, we have one a week that's product focused, adafruit.com slash newsletter. For the daily dose of Adafruit stuff, uh, go to adafruitdaily.com, standalone website. You subscribe to the different categories that we have, our favorites being MicroPython, CircuitPython, and 3D printing. But there's other ones too, like biohacking and wearables. Jobs Board has been open for a little bit. If you are a maker or a company looking for a maker, go to jobs.adafruit.com. It's free service to do so. So check it out if you're, again, looking for uh, opportunities for employers or employees, go to jobs.adafruit.com. There's some nice listings there. We're hanging out in the Discord server. Adafruit has a lovely Discord server that we hang out in and play around with. It's a chat that's open 24-7. I'm hanging out there in the live broadcast. It's the channel to hang out when we're doing these live shows. Hey, uh, shout out to Mr. Certainly, who's always so certain, and all the other folks that are hanging out there as well. We're also in the chats too, in the YouTube chat. Uh, I actually want to right mention something is wrong with the YouTube chat, so I'm not able to respond again this week. It just keeps telling me, error, try wow. again. So we're going to have to tell everybody to go over to the Discord because I cannot respond on there for uh, whatever yeah. reason. I, I can see it. It says... It's... Uh, yeah, it just doesn't... It just says error, try again. It doesn't yeah. give you a proper error. So but shout outs to Seth with Kirby up in the hey YouTube Kirby. chat. <laughs> Jump here. on over yeah, to I the wish. Discord. Yeah, hanging out in the Discord chat room. Again, shout out to Mr. Certainly, he's hanging out. It's a little early, we know, so that's why shout outs may not. And over on the Facebook to too, Mohit uh, Boyt, I don't know, sorry if I butchered your name, hanging out in the Facebook. Hello, hey. good Hello. morning, good evening, afternoon, night, wherever you are in the world. Thank you all for joining us this week. Yep. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's sweet project. <laughs> so CircuitPython meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Um, so check it out, it happened this week. All the folks are back from PyCon. It's a great place to find out all the different happenings. Get RC uh, 3 or 4 just came out, so CircuitPython 4.0 is out. It's Please available. check it out and test it for us. Um, for us, and test it as you're at your leisure. <laughs> so check that out. You can go to circuitpython.org and get your latest version of CircuitPython for your hardware. And if you are a hardware maker yourself, you can submit your hardware to be added to the CircuitPython um, website. So you can uh, ask, ask around in the Discord chat room to get, get become a part of the circuitpython.org website. Very cool. All right, now we can actually do the thing. <laughs> so this week's project is really a look into Pi Badge. So Pi Badge is, is still out of stock, but we are working really hard to make more. We're, wait, we're waiting on uh, the PCBs to come in so we can start fabbing more. Um, but yeah, uh, we wanted to share some some sort of progress that we are making with different cases for the Pi Badge. So this is uh, in addition to the Pi Badge case that we did last week. 
And in this version, we're just trying to make it more ergonomic so that we can put more hours into gaming. The main mm -hmm. thing was the D-pad to kind of leave some dents in your fingers. So we figured, why not make a 3D printed joystick add-on that makes it a little bit easier for your thumb when you're pressing stuff. Yeah, so I cool. put a lot of work into getting it nice and ergonomic, like you said. So the joystick has a nice feeling to it. It has a nice little indent on there, so it's not going to leave dent marks all over your fingers, which will definitely happen, especially when you find out what we are running on this Pi badge. The A and B buttons, uh, again, another important thing that we wanted to make sure that we're absolutely comfortable, since they will dig right into your thumb after a couple minutes of gameplay. So uh, yeah, I'll speak into the the software. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So this is an NES emulator. You guys heard it right. Did you hear that? Emulating right? NES ROMs on the Pi badge. This is super beta right now. Right now, you're seeing uh, a, a, a little window selection Can we for choosing different ROMs. These are just straight up ROMs that uh, that are no standard conversion. ROMs, no conversion. These are just offloaded dot nes um, onto circuit python using uh, qspy so there is an nes folder in the circuit python drive you can see all the and games you there. can see all the games there now it's not going to work with every game there are some limitations with the hardware and the ram so right now we're only supporting games that are under 100 kilobytes which sounds like a lot but it's very or sounds like little but it's a lot yeah a lot of these are like 40 to 60 kilobytes yeah. so so go ahead and let's select a game. Using, what should we select, guys? Yeah. Uh, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, Super Mario Brothers, Tetris, Bomberman. Yeah, what, what did you guys think? Tell us in the comments. What game? Hello from Russia. Hello. It's going to take a minute or two because of the lag. But uh, these are the games that we have tested. Galaga, like I said. Uh, Real quick. Tetris. Uh, Kirby's asking, what's the difference between the Pi Badge and the, and the Pi Gamer? That's a good question. So right off the bat, the Pi Gamer is gonna have the directional button already in there, the joystick. And then you're gonna have a SD card in the back. You have, there it is, completely different PCB yeah, layout just have, for that. Yeah, so you have the analog uh, stick. You mm -hmm. have uh, more spacing in between the buttons. You have a different feeling, better ergonomics, I think. The start and the select buttons are at the bottom, right next to the, um, the five NeoPixels. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you go in the back here, it looks like the same placement and stuff, same stem stem connectors. Um, you do have an additional uh, micro SD card slot, which is right above the battery port up mm -hmm. here, which Close. is interesting. So we'll have to add that. Um, you get an on off button and the reset button's a little bit different. The reset button's like at the top here, you have audio jack out and then the speaker right here. So there you go. You, you still the, have an accelerometer, yeah. you still have yeah, you have the audio jack now. Um, do we have the Pico? So, yeah, the Pico is over here, so you still have that lovely connector, connector to connect the speaker right away. And that's really it. You're looking at just an extra, extra two things is what I see: mm -hmm. the SD card and the joystick, analog joystick, little thumb thumbstick. So same screen, same resolution, same processor, same. Actually, you also have more. Uh, QSPY, so you have eight megabytes of QSPY versus the two megabytes on the Pi badge. So that's why it costs more. That 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 flash is not cheap. So mm -hmm. That's what you're paying for. All right, we got the votes yeah. in. Yeah, which of course mean? Kirby wants to play Kirby's Kirby, Adventure, yeah. which Kirby is actually doesn't it's, too run, it's too big. We'll try it on the Pi Gamer. The we'll ours the should Gamer. be coming in uh, this afternoon, yeah. so. We'll definitely try that out. But the second runner up is Mario Brothers, of Let's course. Do it. So standard and de facto Mario Brothers. Here we go. Yay. Start. Up, start. Up. Yeah. There you go. All right. So Ooh. here is There's Mario Brothers. Super Mario. Now hey, you're gonna do notice you guys that remember when we had to do all this crazy Linuxy stuff to get this to run on a Raspberry Pi Zero? Oh gosh. Do yeah. You guys remember that? Yeah, I do. Uh, I do, remember <laughs> do you remember how long it took to start up? Yeah, minutes. <laughs> minutes. How, how fast was this? It was pretty instant, <laughs> um, which is great. So this totally changes the game for retro gaming um, with emulators because no longer you have to wait for, like I said, uh, a, a Linux distributor to kind of load. You have to wait for the kernel to launch. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. So you're, you're getting audio out. Audio out works. It's not the best because, you know, it's blips and blops, but with CircuitPython, you can run WAV files, which has a little bit better quality. A little bit better. It has a lot of bit better quality mm -hmm. than 8-bit. You kidding me? Yeah, and this is what actually prompted me to go ahead and finish the yeah, joystick like, okay, because I can play on this. once you start playing in this, you get into it and yeah. you forget about your poor thumbs and yeah. all now, the pain. 
of course, uh, you know, this, this is bare bones right now. I don't even think there's a way to change a different ROM. I haven't figured out how yet. It'll, It'll be coming. It's still being worked on. Some other things like save game states is something I'd love to have, but again, super beta. Just getting this to run is really what the focus was. It's so amazing that and this tiny little guy can run NES. Right, and it's, like you said, it's it's not Linux. I can shut it off and don't have to worry about corrupting the file or anything. Mm -hmm. Turn it back on, instantly turns on. It's pretty great. Yeah, so if um, you haven't noticed, all of the uh, directional buttons work, so even diagonal, which uh, you can't really uh, show in this game, but we'll show it up in different uh, in, in segment a little bit later sure. on uh, the diagonal support that Nate Code has. And thankfully, the little joystick uh, has the ability to have those triggered. So you can have two buttons triggered at the same time. That's right. So I'm gonna... Yes, I am working right now. <laughs> No. Okay, right. so it looks like the <laughs> uh, the stuff works over here, on this end. I guess it's just over there. Mm, and then it's okay. your account or something. <laughs> but this is the Adafruit account, so it seems to be working. But you're on the Adafruit. Yeah, account. I'm on the Adafruit That's one. Really bizarre. Yeah. And I died again. Yeah, it's fine. All right, cool. <laughs> well, that is the demo for the NES emulator. It's forthcoming. It's being worked on. Mm -hmm. It's super bare bones, but hey, it's working. The audio is running. It's full frame rates. There's a little bit of scaling issue. As you can see, it's hard to yeah. read the text, but you're looking at a screen that's 160, no, 100, 180 by like 162. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. But you can zoom in as close as you can. Let's see right here until it focuses and you'll get a good look at those pixels. So you can see that there's still a little bit of um, borders on the edge there. So we don't have full scaling yet. Maybe that'll come. So if you want full scaled graphics and, and the best, let's go ahead and jump into make code. So go ahead and double set, double tap on the reset. We're gonna. We'll talk more about the case, but for now, yeah, the, a lot of the things have been redesigned, like the buttons and the uh, right. little uh, Way lanyard better. Yeah. hooks. So this is definitely a lot better. So I'll double click on this little reset button on the back to jump us into the bootloader. Huge, huge shout out to Dan Halbert and team that are working on the Circuit Python. This is probably one of the better bootloaders where it displays the image and it tells you a little bit of instructions with the visual aid of what to do. <laughs> you plug it in and you drop in a UF2 file. Awesome. UF2 comes in, it can, you looking at the dog? No, I'm looking oh, at, at the, the chat. chat. I was like, where's the dog? Is he I don't cute? see where he's being yeah. cute. Uh, so this is awesome. It tells you make code, uh, arcade.makecode.com at the bottom so you can get your UF2 file and then pi badges, pi, pi, uh, Pi badge boot is what you need to, uh, is what the USB drive shows up as. So what I'm gonna do in the background is just drop in a, uh, our new video game that we're working on in collaboration with John Park. So John Park put together a Space Invaders type game, but with Look the how theme, fast that is. Yeah, with the theming of, uh, of Sparky, the blue smoke monster. Now and John has an entire uh, tutorial on how to actually program this game in John Park's workshop. He has a whole playlist on creating games from scratch, like doing sprite animations, loops, uh, music, and a lot more that you can check out. That's right. How he built this. Yeah, this is awesome. So we walked through the whole thing. You can see a demo video of this as well on our YouTube channel. And our learn guide just went up live uh, either yesterday or this morning. And those are little IC chips that uh, Sparky's blasting right now with little mm -hmm. laser beams. They weren't protected. And uh, this is all done with Make Code Arcade, block-based web browser programming editor. Um, let's do JavaScript and Python soon. Um, but it handles a lot of the game mechanics for you. Um, keep uh, score keeping, keeping track of, of life cycles, all that's managed for you. You get uh, projectiles, you get particles, all this sort of stuff is easy and, and easy to kind of make your own game. This was uh, really fun to come in there and, and, and work on the music because that's like my favorite thing to do. And uh, it's really nice because you can use like the, just loop blocks to kind of keep looping um, notes to make arpeggios. Yeah. So it, the workflow is pretty quick for me just to kind of duplicate a block and come out with different notes ah. and different uh, repeating blocks. Um, but yeah, this is very fun. If you wanted to change up the colors and any of the sprites, it's super easy to do so with the sprite editor that's built into it. And uh, like I said, the life management is all handled for you. Collision detection is all kind of handled for you as well. I really like it because it lets you focus on the artwork or the game mechanics itself instead yeah. of 
trying to figure out, yeah. oh, how do I get this score keeping to work? Right. So definitely as an artist, as a designer, it uh, focuses on that. And for kids especially, it lets them get an immediate uh, you know, feedback on the edits that they're doing to the game. And again, I'll note this is bare bones. We still don't have full hardware support. We still need support for the NeoPixels, for the accelerometer. The light sensor, I believe, just started working, but yep, we're, right they're gonna work on implementing a block so that you can play mm -hmm. uh, interactive stuff with the light sensor. That's gonna be huge. Once you start using the accelerometer and the light sensors, then you're like, okay, this is this is more than just a, a Raspberry Pi and a screen, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's, it's got some nice um, sensors on board already. Sweet. So if you want to pick up the Pi Badge, the only way to do so is to sign up right now um, for the Pi Badge, it's right here. Or <laughs> you can get this in stock right now as the Pi Gamer, it's in stock right now. Um, it's like the Pi Badge, but better, <laughs> bigger. Bigger. Um, yeah, a little bit more money, but hey, if you want a game, an actual gaming thing that's gonna feel good in your hands. I think the conference, the, the Pi Badge is, it's like, it's like half, it's, it's half of it, it's a conference badge, the other half is like, oh, I can use this for a little game. Mm -hmm. And this one's full on game, yeah. full, full, full game. <laughs> yep, we'll get ours in sometime this afternoon and we'll do a nice case for that one as well. We do yeah. have, uh, I don't think they're in stock yet, the acrylic cases. I wanna do more demos. That. Let's do another demo. So I wanna display some GIFs. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So we have a GIF editor, so go ahead and go so into. So beyond just doing a uh, tap. Beyond it being a gaming platform, you could have it be a nice little device too, uh, because you do have all the stem programming ports on the bottom here. You can hook up NeoPixels. You can have it be like that Pi Portal project that Catney worked on, where you're controlling NeoPixels with the colors. That's right. Uh, it doesn't have a touch screen, but you should be able to maybe select these with the diagonal button. So, a nice little controller, a visual UI for NeoPixels. It's pretty cool. And now what we're looking at is the GIF animator, the GIF player. You might remember this project from the Pi Portal. It's pretty much the same code, but optimized to run on, uh, on this smaller display. So the GIFs are pretty interesting. So this is a project that uses CircuitPython and Arduino. So CircuitPython is managing the QSpy flash. This is, there's a GIF folder on the USB drive when you plug it in, Pi badge shows up as a USB drive. You drag your GIFs into a GIF folder and then you go back into Arduino, and then Arduino processes it and displays it. So you're using both to do this That's project, because awesome. it's kind of the easiest way to manage this. Mm -hmm. Instead of having to convert your GIF, this is a native GIF that's running, it's being played. It's pretty cool. So this is just some After Effects graphics that we uh, put together um, for the various uh, CircuitPython stuff. So right now it's pretty limited. It just plays back um, those GIFs. Um, I have three of them, I believe. You can put as many as the, the QSpy flash can fit. Play them, it'd be cool to kind of play different ones, uh, like a little player, maybe display audio clips. This is CircuitPython, so we would be able to play um, audio clips and um, you know, display some, some, some animated LEDs on the, on the LEDs there, the NeoPixels. So that'd be all awesome and doable. So that's the GIF player. Bare bones right now, but uh, it's a little preview of it. Let's do another one. I want to share Maker Melissa's name badge. This so is double, cool. double tap again to go into uh, the bootloader mode. Super easy to switch between CircuitPython, Arduino, MakeCode. It's so fast and, and, and it's amazing. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to uh, drop in just the CircuitPython UF2. So it's going to go into regular CircuitPython mode. You see the LEDs flashing away. Once it's done, it'll reload itself. Okay, so this is generated, this isn't just a bitmap, right? The no. name badge. This is all generated using Display I.O. and CircuitPython graphics. So if you're a web developer, it's a lot like CSS, where you're, where you're, you're, um, you're telling where your font wants to go, you're, saying, and you're drawing draw rectangles, block. yeah, mm -hmm. and you're drawing blocks and graphics. Red. So this is a really cool way to, Use to kind of display how to use the libraries. So this was put together by Maker Melissa, who just joined the Adafruit team. Shout out to Maker Ooh. Melissa. She's now and display I.O. queen. She's display I.O. queen. She is leading the way with a lot of the display uh, libraries and drivers. And I'm just trying to focus right here. There we go. So it looks great. So it's a little main badge. Perfect demo for a conference badge. Hashtag badge life. <laughs> I said to throw that in there. So going back to this one, Pedro, why don't you hold down the A button and then hit the up button? What happens? It's getting brighter. 
So this is a great way to Ooh. use the buttons to control the onboard NeoPixels. There's five of them. Now, what if we wanted to change uh, the speed or the direction? Hold down B and then hit left or right. Left, right. Now it's going the other way. Now go down, hit the down button. You see it's slowing down? Ooh. Now it's slowing down the animation. Wow, that's so, so this cool. This is awesome. This is a great <laughs> way to show uh, the NeoPixel animations, the loveliness of the NeoPixels, uh, input controls, and um, the, you know, displaying graphics. So I think this, this is something awesome. that Melissa whipped up really quick right before PyCon. Uh -huh. So um, there's still a lot of stuff that we can expand on this demo. I love it. It's really great. It's really amazing. good way to showcase uh, all the libraries mm -hmm. um, for, for CircuitPython. It's great. It's so amazing. Yeah, so that's awesome. So shout out to Maker Melissa for putting this together. Otherwise, we would not have a CircuitPython demo. <laughs> the GIF one, again, is the GIF player is a great demo, but it, it uses Arduino and CircuitPython. This mm -hmm. one's like all CircuitPython. So cool. Freaking awesome. Super awesome hardware. And um, we're getting our Pi badge, our Pi gamers tomorrow, and I just can't wait to play with it. So again, these are in stock right now, so check it out. If you want to get 10% on that price, you totally can. Use the coupon code badge life. Right, Super cool. swing. Should we jump into Pi what Gauge? Did, <laughs> Pi what, gauge. what I guess is just a continuation of uh, the what are we prototyping? Sure, sure, sure. Let's see it. I don't know what you're showing, so I'm surprised. Oh, it's oh the, yeah. It's Let's look at the sort of a, some bits and bots that Pedro um, had to go through as you're prototyping a project with a lot of little pieces you need to iterate. Yeah, so the joystick modification or add-on for this is just a, a, a update of the the case that we released two weeks ago. So the way that this came up was uh, one of the Time Apps Tuesday projects was a little joystick for the uh, Switch uh, controller. And it just happened to be right next to the Pi badge when I uh, put it right over. I was surprised that all of the D-pad or the directional buttons all lined up perfectly for that. Yeah. So uh, I went ahead and modified the, the uh, case and I wanted to make it uh, where it didn't require any support so all the parts are actually glued on together to create the little uh, holder for the joystick and for the buttons as well. Uh, I don't want to take it apart, I'll show you mm -hmm. that next week, but the buttons and the joystick themselves are actually put together using uh, M2 screws. So those just screw on together because you can't really push these through the case yeah. or the enclosure. So you're gonna need to have them uh, be able to be separated from the base. So those will go in like that. Uh, with the little glued on uh, little covering, holders yeah. covering for that as well as the little walls for the uh, buttons there the a and b uh, i don't know i don't think i'm gonna need any for the start and the select button let me Probably guys uh, yeah. know you're really not you know pushing those as much as yeah. the a and b exactly. in the directional when you're playing so that should be okay uh, i did have to add additional hardwares Luckily, the uh, case from before did have those standoffs with the M3 uh, holes already mm -hmm. on there, so no modifications there, uh, except uh, widening, widening the two hooks for the lanyard, yeah. uh, which, uh, of course, we got to show these off because they're so cool. Yeah, it's it's a like a Python. Get a lanyard. Get a it's like really a playground-themed nice lanyard. <laughs> Super cool. Yeah, very nice. So those are still fit in there. And as I was saying before, you still have the speaker cut out for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have any um, like header projects yet, to, like additional feathers mm -hmm. to put on there, yes, but yes. I will update the case once that, uh, once those are released. So uh, you should have access to the headers for that. And then the reset button, completely reworked it so it's easier to print with no supports. Yes. And it's flush against the backing there so you don't yeah. accidentally hit it. Yeah. Uh, other stuff is uh, the same cutout for the power button and you are gonna need the uh, four M3 by six millimeter long screws mm -hmm. to hold the case on there because when you're pushing these down, it will push the case upwards if you don't have those fastened in place. Uh, cool. Other than that, uh, yeah. One thing to note about the actual buttons that are on the PCB, they have, like you may know, they are silicone yeah, these uh, are actuators, here. the little nubs. So because they're silicone and squishy, this is a uh, what makes the joystick, the 3D printed joystick add-on, actually work really well. Mm -hmm. It's like Ninja Flex, right? So it's a TPU type elastomer. And then uh, the hard flat edge um, kind of rolls off those silicone buttons nicely. Mm -hmm. 
So. Uh, one point though, these do have to be printed on, say, like some a matte type surface. What's that? We did print these in the glass uh, uh, beds, and they just slide around. So these really? give it a lot more oh, grip, even though these grip. are silicone. I guess you could sand it if you did print it on glass and you have no you choice. Just yeah. sand the surface or put something on the surface. But all the bottoms to these are using the PEI powder coated Got bottoms. It. So it has a real nice texture. So it has a texture that grips on or the silicone is able to grip onto that really nice. When I printed it on a glass uh, surface, it was uh, too slippery, it would like slide yeah. around. Hmm. Yeah, these are all things that have to be considered. Hmm. And we'll take a look Surface. at the CAD and all that next Hold. week for uh, making these nice and comfy. Cool. Speaking of CAD, why don't we jump into layer by layer? I got some layer by layers for ya. I thought I had a layer by layer thing. It's gone. Did I delete it? I was like, I ain't doing layer by layers no more. And I come up with three of them. <laughs> That's great. Well, let's jump into uh, layer by layer. I don't have this thing, but we're in layer by layer now. <laughs> Is there, I, deleted or something, I can't see it. Oh, the screen. Yeah, this the little picture image of it. Anyway, let's go to a blog post that I made that houses, okay, so I came out with three Laravel layers. It's a bit of a mini series. The goal was to make a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I designed the Snap Fit version of the Pi badge case. So it ended up being pretty long. So uh, the first version of the video, the first part of the video talks about uh, the Pi badge uh, importing the PCB that we put together uh, and using construction planes to kind of create the, the placement uh, for the Pi badge. So that's the initial like creating the two halves. In part two, we take a look at creating the cutouts for exposing the display, the NeoPixels, the buttons, USB port, that sort of stuff. So we walk through that one using projected edges. And then in part three, we take a look at using the snap fits. So this one's kind of a uh, this is a very different way to do it. Instead of drawing your SnapFit features within the document itself, I've created an external component of the SnapFit features so that I can bring them into any design and merge them into my enclosure so that uh, it makes the workflow a little bit easier. So like I said, you don't have to redraw your SnapFits every time. You can just bring in your component and it's driven with user parameters so you can, so you can uh, customize the length or the size of the SnapFit to adjust to the scaling of your project, whether it's small or whether it's bigger. So this three-part series is up now. It's been up. Thank you guys so much for watching it. The most of you have, have watched it and, and, and uh, commented on it. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, three-parters. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, some Fusion and, and take a look at the, uh, at the case in Fusion 360. Real quick, I love Doom and asking, did I miss the 3D scanning part? Nope, that's coming up next. Yeah, <laughs> next. Yep, so uh, the, the PCB file itself has been out. We put this together in Fusion. Um, we also have this available as a step file. So folks that use uh, you know, some different CAD packages like Maya or Autodesk or Onshape or even in, uh, what's the other one, SolidWorks. Step file is gonna work with all that since it's like the original, uh, original solids. So this is the, the Pi Badge PCB that's up there on our GitHub repo. Links are in the description. It's got all the components on there and uh, lovely silkscreen graphics by Philip Burgess, Painter Dragon. So check that out. So the case uh, itself is also available to download um, as a step file. We have a, it's in our learn guide for, for this one. And uh, this one has those snap features like I was saying and it has these little indentations on the side to know where the snap fits are. It also helps kind of take it apart. And uh, unlike Pager's one, I don't have all the things exposed, like the button on the back here. Um, but the, the version that we did release does have the button on the back for resetting, because you kind of need that there. Yeah. I kind of ran out of time. I was like, all right, it's been like a couple hours. So I did expose the light sensor, though, so that was cool. So check it out. It is up on the internet as a file. So you can check out all the files. Pages is, is up there as well. And if you want a, a real deep dive into how to design an enclosure for our projects, you can check out the layer by layer. Sweet. All right. Let's uh, jump over to Badge Life is the coupon code. Yanni on uh, the Discord is saying that it looks kind of like the Nokia N gauge. Remember that? Does it? Yeah, remember the, the first gaming yeah. phone? Oh yeah, 
thing as well. So, yeah. So there you go. We're going to be making lots of different cases for. Um, we, we were talking about like making arcades, little small arcades mm -hmm. and stuff. Lots Arcade of different cabinets. ways we could go for that. It's going to be really fun. All right. Well, that is Lair Belair. Check it out. I have a blog post again that you can check out. It has all of them there. And uh, check out the CAD file too. We also have it in STL format, so if you're using Tinkercad or Mesh Mixer, you can you can play with that too. Cool. All right, let's jump into what are you prototyping? <laughs> this is a mismatch this week. It's like half of prototyping, half of shop talk, <laughs> something like that. So yeah, let's jump into it. So uh, the Raspberry Pi, a new Raspberry Pi based project. This is a 3D scanner. Are you sure it's not the Enterprise? Yeah, it's Starship Enterprise. Dun, 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 Powered dun, by dun. the Cricket. Yeah, so uh, a open source uh, 3D scanner is uh, one of those projects that's really great for the Raspberry Pi. And it's, it's got a lot of processing power. Um, and you can use uh, the Raspberry Pi module uh, to capture images. Over here, we have a five volt stepper motor. It's the small reduction gear, so you have a little turntable here. It's based off of a piece of 2020. <laughs> so this is a, the other half of the 2020 aluminum extrusion that I used in the heat press project. So I put that to good use. And over here is where all those stuff is. So we have the Raspberry Pi 3 in the back here. On top of that is the Adafruit Cricket. So the Adafruit Cricket makes it really easy to connect all sorts of uh, motors, drivers, steppers. So I have two laser diodes that are being wired into the drive section. And then the stepper motor itself is right here. This one gets wired into the motor drive. So it's using all five wires. You still have a lot of uh, expansion ports for servos and other things. But for this you know, 3D scanner, uh, you don't really need much more than two laser diodes, the Pi camera module, and a stepper motor. The stepper motor is a five volt variant. A lot of the ones that are out right now use the 12 volts, but because this is the Cricut, it's, it's more on the five volt side. So that's what we have. And let's see what else. Piece of 2020 holds everything together. So you get that, um, you get that nice distance here between the camera and the platter. And let's see what else to it. They really like using 2020 because you, uh, you can slot into it and you can hide wiring into this little railing here. So that all works really nice. Um, so this is a project that we are working on in collaboration with Dave Estelle. So he's going to be uh, porting some software so that it runs uh, on uh, Python on the, on the Pi 3 using the Cricut libraries. So awesome. This is our first <laughs> little look at it, right? So most of this is figured out. We just need to get our software running. So what I'll do now is look at the do, 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 do. Let's take a look at the projects that we are kind of looking at. So there is a, there's a couple of different projects out there right now. But the main one that we are kind of referencing, if I can get this tab, that'd be great. Thanks. So this is from uh, freelss.org. So it's a free 3D printable laser scanning system. Mm -hmm. So it has some code on GitHub, hardware files on, um, on Thingiverse, and there's like a custom PCB for driving uh, the stepper motor. But because we're using the Cricut, we don't have to worry about creating a custom PCB because you kind of have that that, that that does all the stuff for you, mm -hmm. really easy to wire in. So this is called the Atlas 3D Scanner by uh, Murobo. And this has been out since 2016 of January. A couple of makes already. And it's, um, it's all open source. So I took a look at this and uh, wanted to kind of make it so that it works with the 5 volt stepper motor, because this one's designed for the bigger stepper motors, the 12 volt one. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and me and Dave were like, well, you know, it uses a lot of screws and it's a pretty big part. So I have to print all these pieces okay. just to make the railing. So I was like, wait a minute, you know, we have 2020. Why not use that? Maybe I could just kind of make my own thing here. So this is where we kind of started off of and um, pretty, pretty neat design. And this one has a couple makes on it, like I said. And uh, yeah, we're just going on a different route. So it, it, it you know, it's going to have the same shape where you have a, you know, you have a camera and you have the turntable, but we wanted to make it so that it was less hardware, 
uh, less parts as well. And that's what we came up with. So we'll be putting the guide together. And uh, again, this is a collaboration project with Dave Estelles. And Dave is probably in the chat room hanging out. Let me see. Maybe not. <laughs> He's busy out. programming. He's busy programming. Yeah, getting this done. Awesome. So that is what we're working on. It's probably two weeks out, maybe even three. Uh, but that's what we have so far. If you guys have any suggestions or any, um, any input, let me know. Um, I do have some, some files to give out for folks. So if you are also working on a Cricut hat, this is the Raspberry Pi Cricut hat-based projects, I will be releasing this uh, over here, if I can switch my screen. We put together the 3D model for the Pi, Raspberry Pi Cricut hat. Uh, so we put this together. I took the Eagle CAD file Lamar has in the product page brought it into Fusion to start mapping these components. So this has uh, all the things that you need. Um, the screw block terminals really make it easy to wire all the different components. You don't really have to do much soldering. It's got those slots for the camera uh, ribbon to pass through. And it's got that honking 3 by 8 um, female header in the middle there uh, for signals. And then we also have the server control up there server ports near the middle there. So it's got just about all the components that you need. A nice big barrel jack, NeoPixel, single NeoPixel for status LED, on off switch, and then the micro USB for programming over Seesaw. What's interesting is the cap touch uh, pads are on the side here. And those actually work out pretty well because I think what we'll do is maybe we can have the, um, the cap touch actually do some input. So you can maybe start the scan or something by tapping on those. That'd be kind of neat. Instead of putting real buttons on there, you kind of already have them put right on there. So that is interesting. And then there's some other components and bits. Uh, on the bottom, you can see we have that tw uh, 2x20 GPIO header, which you've co uh, come and known. This is the short profile version, so it makes uh, snapping on top, of a, on top of a Raspberry Pi uh, nice and thin. So it's got that low profile. Very cool. And then you can see all the um, lovely silk screen by Philip Burgess again. Um, shows up really nice here. I got the workflow down. I'm getting those uh, silk screen graphics to show up here on Fusion. I put the tutorial together too on how I did that. So if you guys are interested in how to get crisp and clean silk screen graphics out of Eagle Cat into Fusion, check out that tutorial. I think it's a good uh, insight into that. But there you go. I will be releasing this uh, shortly, I guess later today. I'll make a blog post about it too. And uh, we'll release this as a STL step file as well so folks with other CAD packages can have their way at it. And a reminder, they are all on the GitHub. Just They're posted the links GitHub. to that. Definitely Thank you so much. star or follow that uh, repository for yeah. all of the latest CAD models that we upload awesome. every single week. Oh, I also forgot. I also have the laser diode that I put together. It's just a, you know, a cylinder, but it's got some nice edges to it. Um, if you are wondering where I got the Pi camera, uh, I guess I can link to that, but that is a, uh, a GitHub finding. So I found this nice drawing that I, uh, a, 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 a designer put together of the Raspberry Pi camera. It also has all the bits and bobs on the back there. Really nice connector as well, as you can see. It has all the capacitors and things on it proper mounting holes. It, you know what, it had too many. It had like the CMOS sensor with like 100 pins. I was like, no, 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 I deleted that and cleaned it out because like I'm not throwing that in my design, that's too much. And then the Raspberry Pi 3, I also found on GitHub or GrabCAD. And if we hide the, uh, the Cricut hat, we can get a better look. This one's a little, a little bit more cleaner. It has like uh, the connectors on there, which is really what you need. And it also has like these, uh, these heat sink, heat sinks, which is uh, interesting if you have a heat seat on there, heat sink on there, I guess you have the clearance for that, but I don't think this project uses that. And the SD card is in there, which is kind of nice. So really clean, simple model uh, for the Pi 3. So I didn't have to draw that, that's real nice. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah, I love Doom is asking if we have any scan data to show off yet. Dave is testing that out. I did see some of the, some of the point clouds that he's able to pull yeah. from a scan, so that'll be coming out soon, right. probably next week. Yeah, and if you check out um, all the open source projects that are already out, 
you can see a good look at what those look like. So the Atlas scanner has a, like this model here. Um, and I think this, the actual source, yeah, they did like a skull. So you have the skull here. Um, I mean, you know, the, the, the images are only going to be as good as you put the effort into them. And uh, it's kind of hard to get a good image of, of anything. <laughs> um, but it's fine, you know, it's an open source project. There's, I'm sure there's more out there. Um, I did a little bit of research on it and saw that there's a, a couple different ones. And uh, yeah. Yanni saying that uh, we're using the Raspberry Pi to scan Raspberry Pi. We should. The actual be pie. Good, yeah. <laughs> pie. That'd be good to see how it handles organic surfaces. Right. Yeah, so we had a MakerBot dupli digitizer yeah. back in like 2012 or 2013. It pretty much this thing. Mm -hmm. um, it was like a peripheral. You, you plugged it into your computer and your computer did all the processing. Um, but it would probably was written in Python too. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I don't remember the workflow too well, but I do remember that reflective stuff, no good. You want stuff that's matte. Yeah. You want stuff It'll probably that be the same. Nothing that's reflective. too many overhangs. I'm thinking this might be a good demo. First scan. It's a uh, Got to unicorn. scan a unicorn. Yeah, it's a unicorn. It's matte. Most porcelain stuff is like glossy, but this one was not gloss, so it's perfect. And it's white, so the laser beams are going to be pretty well. Yeah, so and it's fairly large. We'll see. I might have to add a tripod uh, adapter to this for panning, or for tilting rather. And I might need to expand this right here so it's taller. I don't know yet. So I don't even have the pie running yet. I literally finished it like last night. Sent the files this morning to Dave. Imagination the former saying that he'd like to scan his head to have a model for making cosplay stuff. Excellent. That's a cool idea. Uh, this one's you might want to do it. Yeah. Uh, for like small little yeah uh, small stuff small like stuff. I showed that thing here mm -hmm. cool okay well that is what we are prototyping let's jump into community makes so we don't get too far uh, so this week we time lapsed one of our own designs so this is a geodesic lamp shade and the story behind this one is a bit of a remix project. Uh, Back in December, we made a ball drop, New Year's Eve ball drop project, which had a similar shape. It was a geodesic dome. It used uh, two, two different materials, a dark filament and a transparent filament to create this light diffusion. Um, so I figured uh, this would make a great lampshade, but instead of fusing the, the kind of framing to the shade, uh, I kind of separated them and kind of made them independently, but they fuse together at the top. So you get this inner core of diffusion in this outer frame that's printed in this uh, Vertigo Galaxy black filament. So you get this really cool effect when you, when you have light shine in the middle of it. So this fits your standard um, light bulbs, the ER26. And Pedro is holding it right here. Yeah, so this is printed on our Ultimakers, but it should work on any of the dual extruder printers or even the multi-material um, devices like Pallet or Prusa's multi-material um, unit. I really like this effect where it's completely separated yeah. and then it comes back together at both ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's fused, but not fused. And then this real nice um, edges on the inside looks floral. That's really cool. Yeah, a lot of hexagons. Cool. Yeah, so that's a, a Thingiverse thing. We put it up on Thingiverse, a couple likes on there. If you have a dual capable machine, try it out. You know, it's, it's kind of kind of a fun design. So you can see the two different parts, the framing, and then this, I have two different ones, a big one and a small one. Um, I think we're showing off the small one here. Yeah. So. You could definitely just print these as separate pieces and glue them together. <laughs> totally good. I did do that with the framing because it, uh, the overhangs catch itself. Mm -hmm. So although it's got massive overhangs, it ends up catching itself pretty nicely, especially when you have good active cooling on your printer. Yeah. So there you go, lampshade this week. Next week we'll have some more fun stuff too. <laughs> some funny comments from Mr. Certainly if a normal picture is worth a thousand words, how much is a 3D picture worth? <laughs> 
And then we're getting some uh, imagination of form. I was saying that he uh, wanted to scan his head. The, one of the ways that we scanned our head was with the Connect, yeah, the, Connect the Microsoft Connect. Microsoft. We just used their, I think it was NetFab to actually process the uh, point clouds for that. And we actually, that's how, I, when I build helmets, I just import that model in of mm -hmm. my head yeah. and model around it. I think Aaron St. Blaine did the same. She we have a model for same. head still yeah. that we used for the For the wasp Man helmet. Swap. Yeah, it's a wasp helmet. So Very there cool. are ways to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't made a tutorial for that, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but there are loads of uh, little step-by-step -step, uh, to set that up hard, uh, software and hardware-wise. Yep. Cool. So that is what we got today. Sorry, just reading the comments here. Yep, yep. that's fine with me. Also, yeah, if you want to get the, the Cricut hat for your Raspberry Pi, it is out of stock, but please sign up so we know to make more. So if you're looking to do some robotics with your Raspberry Pi, or even make a little device like this, you know, run a stepper motor and some lasers, maybe make a cat toy or something. That'd be cool. Let's see. Uh, there's a question about Magic Mirror. We do have a Magic Mirror project. If you search uh, learn.adafruit.com, you can mm -hmm. see what we use there. Right. They're asking for a sensor to use. Hmm. Also check the like Instructables and Hackster are great yeah. places to see existing projects. Hackaday, I know. Yes. Cool, we're at 33 in stock. I think by tonight we're not gonna have any. Again, get that coupon code if you and are getting. Another uh, funny anecdote, um, which brings up uh, imagination to form saying that he should order some 2020 so you could do the insert project and the other half for the scanner project, which is exactly what we did here. We chopped in half the 2020 extrusion. Yes. We're able to get two projects out of that. Yep. So it's definitely good, do like, that. Gun or something. Yeah, it's so lightweight. Such I know, a small I love thing. the 2020. Love 2020. Where's Bill Binko so you can tell me to I redesign it and make here. it better? <laughs> it always comes up better. I think it was in here. I don't see it's him. fine. All right. Well, <laughs> we're going to end the show, and <laughs> this is a lot of fun. So right. later tonight, we have Show and Tell. comes on at uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Shortly after that, Ask an Engineer, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Lamar and Phil, full fire with Lamar and Phil. Company news, uh, new products, Circuit Python community exciting news. Exciting and behind-the-scenes news at the cover so definitely tune in for that as yeah. well as another coupon code i think some more sneak peek i'm yeah. really looking forward to something like the gizmo and oh yeah getting more pie so cool stuff coming out ah. yeah and don't forget tomorrow is john park show that's right john park tomorrow at 4 p.m each in time get some make code minutes some more look at the Pi Badge, Pi Gamer. Pi Gamer, yeah. Uh, He's gonna, gonna be showing off some more Pi awesome. Bat, Pi Gamer all <laughs> Very cool. So definitely tune in for that. Yeah. And don't forget, this is 3D Hangouts. We do the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Don't forget, coupon code is Badge Life. We'll have another one tonight and tomorrow. But until then, use Badge Life and get 10% off your order. Well, that was a lot of fun. I don't know what else to end it with. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm just looking at all the little images here. I need to get that Laravel layer in back in there. <laughs> yeah, check out the Laravel layer. There's three of them to look at. Cool. All right, guys. Very cool. Yeah, yeah thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to make a great day. And uh, bye, everybody. See you next week.